In today's video, we're going to take a look at three different docking solutions for your Steam Deck. Two of those I purchased, one was provided for review. We'll check out the main features of each and put them to the test, starting with the official Steam Deck dock. I will say up front, how I expected each to perform was not at all what I observed. If you visit the Steam Deck guide located at wagnerstechtalk.com forward slash Steam Deck, and from the table of contents, select the official Steam Deck docking station, it will provide additional information that may be helpful. We'll test the file copy performance from USB over the network in both SteamOS as well as Windows 11, and some additional tests that you may be interested in. The goal here is to demonstrate what to expect from each to help you determine which, if any of these, fit your particular use case. I'm John, and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. We'll start off with the official Steam Deck docking station. Before we take a look at what's inside the box, we'll quickly go over some of its main features. The dock supports power delivery, that is, you can plug in the power adapter to the dock and charge your Steam Deck while docked. The price is $89, which is the most expensive of all the docking stations we'll be discussing in this video. It has one HDMI port that can output at 4K 60Hz or 1440p at 120 hertz. There is one display port and it has a gigabit ethernet port and three USB 3.1 ports which should provide 10 gigabits per second data transfer. I ordered this unit directly from Valve and received it about a week later. We'll take a look at the dock in just a moment. At the bottom of the box we'll find an included power adapter and a health and safety booklet by the way, this booklet is in multiple languages and provides no useful technical information regarding the dock. The dock has rubber pads on the top platform to protect the bottom of the Steam Deck from scratches, as well as padding material on the bottom to keep it from sliding around a flat surface. At the back of the dock, we have a non-removable USB-C cable to the Steam Deck, a display port, HDMI 2.0 port, USB-C power input, gigabit ethernet, and three USB 3.1 ports. This end of the cable plugs directly into the Steam Deck from the dock, and the power supply that's included is of course USB-C on one end and identical to the power supply included with the Steam Deck itself. One issue that I ran into immediately was that while using my TPU protective case, not only does the Steam Deck not fit comfortably inside the dock, but you can't even connect the USB-C cable into the Steam Deck. Given the delay producing these docks, I would have expected Valve to take this into consideration when designing it. I removed the TPU case from my Steam Deck and everything fit fine at that point, but it was an unnecessary nuisance. To begin my testing of the dock, I connected an external portable monitor over HDMI, the USB-C power, gigabit ethernet cable, and a USB keyboard. I also connected an SSD installed in this cool RetroFlag cartridge shell to one of the USB 3.1 ports. With everything connected to the docking station, I simply connect this one USB-C cable from the dock to the Steam Deck. Notice the charge indicator LED is lit. Now I'll press the power button on the Steam Deck and I was immediately greeted with a docking station update dialog. I selected apply to go ahead and update the docking station firmware which took a few minutes. Once completed, I wanted to check out the connected devices. I entered desktop mode by pressing the Steam button, then power, and the option for switch to desktop. Next, I loaded up the Dolphin file manager to browse the SSD, and everything looked fine there. I was able to browse the folder structure and games I had previously installed on a Raspberry Pi. Next test was the display port. None of my monitors support a direct display port connection, so use this cable to convert the signal to HDMI. This worked fine initially, then decided to disconnect the HDMI cable, and when I did, the display port connection went with it. When I plugged the HDMI cable back in, neither of the two external displays came back on. I had to disconnect the USB-C connection on the Steam Deck and reconnect it for both of them to come back on. This appears to be an issue with SteamOS, 
which will hopefully be resolved in a future update. The reason why I believe it's a SteamOS issue and not an issue with the Docs firmware is because I tried the same test under Windows 11 running from a micro SD card after the dock had been updated with the latest firmware. While in Windows 11, removing the HDMI cable and reconnecting it restored all the displays just fine. I also don't think it has anything to do with my HDMI to display port cable, otherwise I should have seen the same issue in Windows 11, but didn't. If you're interested in installing Windows 10 or 11 to a micro SD card for use with your Steam Deck, here's a link to a full guide that explains how it was done and answers many of the questions you may have in the Q&A section. It steps you through each process very easily and will leave your SteamOS installation intact. That is, you can swap between the two. Should you have any difficulties, there's a troubleshooting section and much more to help you get the most out of Windows on your Steam Deck. For our last test, we'll test copying a 1.2 gigabyte file from this USB 3.1 stick across the network using Windows to my Synology NAS. Then we'll compare the same exact test within SteamOS Desktop. This test will demonstrate the speed reading from the USB stick as well as the gigabit Ethernet transfer. This should provide a good representation of what you can expect while using the Steam Deck docking station. At no point during this file copy operation did I speed up the video. This is exactly how long it took to copy the file. Now if I right click it and go to properties, you'll see the file copied was 1.2 gigabytes in size over to my NAS. Now we'll repeat the test, making sure the gigabit ethernet is active from SteamOS desktop. We'll be using the same USB 3.1 stick, the same file, the same network connection to the NAS using the same Steam docking station. However, in this instance, I will skip ahead as the file transfer took 32 seconds to complete and average less than half the speed, around 37 megabytes per second. Please keep in mind, the intent of this test is simply to demonstrate the Steam Deck docking station in scenarios you may be interested in. Nothing more. Of course, the most common use case for this dock is to allow playing games from across the room on your HD TV. And for that, it works rather well. There are many options when it comes to docking solutions for your Steam Deck, besides the official Steam Deck dock. The one we'll be discussing next was provided for review by Park Sung. We'll put it through the same test that we did with the official dock to see if it's worth consideration. This dock includes support for power delivery, though it does not include an extra power adapter, so you'll need to either pick up an extra one or use the one included with your Steam Deck. The price is nearly half that of the official Steam Deck dock. It also only has one HDMI port and no display port. If having two displays is important to you, then you may want to skip to the next docking station that we'll discuss. It does have gigabit ethernet, and it also has three USB 3.0 ports, not 3.1 ports as seen on the official Steam Deck dock. But before you consider skipping this, I'll let you know up front that the transfer speeds in SteamOS we're actually faster with this dock than the official dock. Getting it out of the box, the included manual is brief but has some helpful information. It includes a removable USB-C to USB-C cable for connecting to the dock, and the dock has protective pads on the tray to prevent scratches on the bottom of the deck, as well as rubber pads on the bottom to keep it from sliding around a flat surface. Looking at the back, we have the Steam Deck port, the USB-C power input, three USB 3.0 ports, gigabit ethernet, and an HDMI port. I'll plug in the power and the USB-C cable to the deck. And I'm happy that the Steam Deck fits well in the dock with the TPU case installed. The deck cable also fits nicely as well. Now I'll plug in the same cables we used for the Steam Deck docking station test minus the display port cable, and we'll perform a file transfer test within SteamOS Desktop. Now with everything connected, we'll copy a 1.2 gigabyte file from the USB 3.1 stick over to the NAS. First, 
we need to double check that we're connected to the wired Ethernet connection, and I'll drag and drop the file into the NAS subfolder to begin the copy operation. Then I'll expand the copy details within Dolphin File Manager, and here we're seeing between 57 and 60 megabytes, or more technically accurate, mebabytes per second. That's nearly twice the speed we saw with the official Steam Deck dock, and caching isn't the reason. This segment was recorded before testing on the official Steam Deck dock. But what about performance under Windows 11? Same dock, USB 3.1 stick, NAS, etc., and saw between 110 and 113 megabytes per second transfer rate. It's important to note, based on the results of these tests, the file transfer and network performance combined was indeed better than what we saw previously with the official Steam Deck docking station. While we're at it, let's do the HDMI disconnect test and see if there are any issues here. And apparently, everything looks good. Of course, the main use case for this or any dock is primarily just to have fun using it. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this next dock, and I'll explain why in just a moment. But first, it has two HDMI ports, one USB 3.0 port, power input, a display port over on the side, and on the back you have two USB 2.0 ports, a full-size SD slot, and a slot for a micro SD card. Aside from missing two USB 3.0 ports, it also doesn't have an Ethernet port. The reason why I'm not going to go too in-depth here is primarily because I've covered it extensively on this channel in at least three different videos, including one dedicated to the Solor and S-Global dock. I'll place a link down below if you want to learn more about it. Since it doesn't include a stand, it makes it a nice portable option, and you have the ability to connect up to three external monitors, which is pretty cool. One of my use cases for this dock was to connect my Steam Deck directly to my Legends pinball machine, to play hundreds of excellent community developed pinball tables using Visual Pinball X and Future Pinball for both the playfield and the back glass. Let's take a quick look. I only had room on my workbench for two external monitors, so I had to improvise by using the HDMI input on the Legends Ultimate Arcade Machine. I think it's pretty impressive that the Steam Deck and the Solor and S Global Dock was able to drive a total of three external displays under Windows 11. I then repeated the test under SteamOS and had no issues connecting the two HDMI ports and Display Port in the same configuration. That brings us to the end of another video. Based on the observation shown, let's simplify which dock may be ideal for a particular use case of the three shown here. For the official Steam Deck dock, it's nice that it included a power supply, though you can find those fairly cheap separately. It does include a display port in addition to one HDMI port, which some may appreciate. It does support power delivery, just as the other docks here do as well. And there is a stand for holding the Steam Deck, though if you have a TPU cover, you'll have to remove it to use the dock. If you're looking for a dock with the best Ethernet and USB performance, the clear winner here during my testing was the Park Sung dock. It supports power delivery, the price is nearly half that of the official Steam Deck dock, and you can use a protective case without having to remove it. Of course, the stand itself is built in. When it comes to portability, the Solor and S Global dock is the most portable. It has two HDMI ports and a display port, allowing a total of three external monitor connections. There are also slots for an SD and micro SD card, which is a feature not found on any of the other docks. It also supports power delivery. The price is again around half that of the official Steam Deck dock, and you can use a protective case without having to remove it. Are you considering a dock, or perhaps you already have one? Please comment below with your thoughts. I hope you found this video informative. If you did, please click the like button to let me know. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do. And with that, 
I look forward to talking with you again very soon. <laughs>